Starting with the next section on urban geography, let's focus on some of the important models. So the very first model that we would talk about is the model given by Burgess and this model is known as the concentric model. So under the Burgess model, the idea is there is a central business district and this CBD or the central business district is located in the center. Now around this is everything that revolves. So this downtown or the CBD has maximum accessibility and also maximum visibility. There is PLVI, the peak land value intersection which is found here. So if we talk about the distance from the central business district far, the rent would significantly decrease. So rent for the residential declines very steeply for the manufacturing and for the retail purpose so that's how we understand it now the innermost is the central business district followed by the factory zone the zone of transition the working class population the residential zone which is seen and finally outside is the zone of commuting population right and this was what was the burgess model now burgess model focused on an important concept which is the bid rent theory and as you can see here is the demonstration for bid rent the idea under bid rent is the amount people would have to pay for the land so how much amount a people have to pay for land would be explained under the burgess bid rent theory the next important concept that we would understand is the hoyerts sector model now Hoyt, uh, so Burgess model was given somewhere in 1920s and it is similar to the concentric rings of the tree. Now Hoyt model, if you want to find an analogy, this is a simple pie cut of a wedge. Right? Now this Hoyt model was given in 1939 and this came in with improvements in transport. So as the transport improved, it said that there would be electric trolley and when there is electric trolley, the low income people can live far away from the CBD. So the red one is the CBD. The purple here shows the high class residential population. Then the middle class residential population. The blue one is the factories and the remaining green one is the low class residential population. And who had said that with the improvement in the transport systems, electric trolleys came in and these trolleys could take the people to a far off distance. And therefore, uh, electric trolleys extended the low income population which usually was near to the CBD far from the CBD or the central business district. So therefore, Hoyt's model is important. The next model that came in was the Eris and Ullman's model of multiple nuclei. So this is one central business district that was there. Now, according to this, there was an outlying central business district that was established, a residential suburb far off, a heavy industrial suburb, which is again for far off, and an industrial suburb, which is far off. Now, near the central business district is the wholesale market. There is low class settlement, which lies close to the central business district because you could have easy availability of the labor and the work to be done. This is the medium class residential settlement and high class residential settlement. So this model said CBD was not only a single nucleus, it was a multiple nucleus. So there are two CBD as you can see. So a good analogy could be you take a choco chip cookie and this has various choco chips. Now these chips, each of them would be a CBD, a central business district and around which you would see a new, uh, the various uh, developments of the city that would evolve. Now here, uh, this theory of Harrison Ullman is based on four important aspects. The first is differential accessibility. So how people can reach the CBD.